So oftentimes people, they're believing God and trusting God and thanking God. He's answered their prayer about other things. And now they're asking about something else and God's silent. Watch this. God is only silent when he's up to something fantastic. So it's, it's not that he's forgotten. It's not that he wasn't listening. It's just that he doesn't do it when we think he ought to do it. And if he doesn't match my schedule, then I think he doesn't love me. He doesn't care. I do this for him. I do that for him and all the rest. No, God hadn't changed. Watch this. He knows exactly when you and I need what we need. And he knows the best way to provide it. Because disappointments can come and they're unavoidable, you can get covered with discouragement in a moment, but you don't have to accept it. Remember, disappointments are unavoidable. Discouragement is a choice. I refuse to be discouraged. On what basis? On the basis that God loves me. He's a good God. He's all-powerful. He's with me. He's going to see me through it, and He promises to never leave me. Carol Stanley from In Touch Ministries. The question I want to answer today is, what is God's message to us in this troublesome, trying time we are facing? We have responsibilities to the government. We have responsibilities to the physicians that are helping us. And we have responsibility to Almighty God. So I want us to turn to the Word of God for direction and assurance. And one of the first verses I want to turn to is Psalm 103, verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all, which means that God is in control of all this. He knew it before it happened. He knows why it happened, and he knows how long it's going to happen. And our question is, what is our response to what God has allowed to happen at this time in our country? This is not a time for fear, but of courage. I can remember when the Second World War broke out. I was only nine years of age. But I remember people's response. Many times it was fear. And then after a short period of time, there was prayer and confidence and boldness and assurance that we were going to win. And we will win this battle also. But what we want to look at right now is what is God's instructions to us as believers? Because as believers, we have a powerful influence in this country. And the encouraging words of the Word of God is the most important thing we can place before us. All of us know, at least most of us do, the 23rd Psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear any evil, for the Lord God is with me. And then I think about other verses here in the Scriptures that I want to turn to. And one of them is Isaiah 41. And um, when I look at this verse and, and how many times I've turned to it for myself, he says, I have chosen you and not rejected you. Do not anxiously look about you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, which is a wonderful promise that God has given us in times like these. And I think about, uh, for example, um, let's say maybe uh, Isaiah 54, and um, I want to turn to this passage because I've turned to this one many times. Listen to this verse. No weapon formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that accuses you in the judgment will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the living God. And then, of course, there's what Jesus said in the 14th chapter of uh, John. He said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. When you and I focus our attention and our heart on the Word of God, whatever we are facing in life, He knows how to help us to overcome feelings with faith. Faith can defeat bad feelings. And I trust that in your particular household that you have a Bible, you have the promise of God's Word in your heart, and He has something to say to you. 
This is a time not for pleasure, but prayer. Prayer like we've never prayed before. Not a time for fear and depression, but a time for faith and obedience. And what you have to ask is, God, how am I to respond to these things? The question is, what is your relationship to Jesus Christ? And then I think about one more passage I want to read to you, and one that many people know by heart. And the scripture says, If my people who are known are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and listen to this, and turn from their wicked ways, a very important part, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Where are you spiritually in your relationship to God? Would you say that your lifestyle makes a contribution to the healing of our country? Or would you have to say it doesn't? But if it doesn't, here's a verse of scripture you need to read. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to plead with you in Jesus' name, not only for your sake and your good health, but for the sake and the good health of the nation, to surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. Trust him to save you. He says, if I confess my sins, he'll forgive me. He will forgive you, no matter what you've done. If you've never surrendered your life to Christ, this is a perfect time to do it. And I trust that as you surrender your life to him, obey the rules that are given to us today, God will heal our land. God bless you. Charles Stanley, Atlanta pastor, televangelist, and in touch ministries founder, dead at 90. Dr. Charles Stanley, who founded in touch ministries and was the senior pastor at Atlanta's First Baptist Church, died Tuesday morning at the age of 90. According to Fox Atlanta, First Baptist Atlanta senior pastor, Anthony Georgia said that the former leader of the church died peacefully in his home. Stanley was not just a pastor, but he was also a broadcaster and author who was part of the First Baptist Church of Atlanta for more than 50 years. In 1971, the church named him the senior pastor, making him the 16th person to serve in the position since the church's inception in 1848. Over the course of his life, of his time serving the church in a leadership role, the congregation grew more diverse and to over 15,000 members. Ultimately, the growth forced our first fast Baptist Atlanta to move from its midtown Atlanta home in 1997 to Down Woody. Stanley was born in Dry Fork, Virginia in 1932 and was Charlie and Rebecca Stanley's only child, according to the In Touch Ministries website. The site says when Stanley was 14, he received a call to ministry and began preaching to whoever whom he would listen. Stanley was born 25th September 1932 and died April 18th, 2023. He was an American Baptist pastor and writer. He was senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Atlanta for 49 years. He founded and was president of In Touch Ministries, which widely broadcast his sermons through television and radio. He also served two one-year terms as president of the Southern Baptist Convention from 1984 to 1986. Stanley was born in Dry Fork, an unincorporated community of Pittsylvania County, Virginia. His father, also named Charles, died nine months later. Stanley's family moved through country throughout his childhood. At the age of 12, he became a born-again Christian, and at the age of 14, he began his life's work in Christian ministry. He studied at University of Richmond and earned a Bachelor of Arts, and then he studied at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort 
great worth takes us and earned a master of divinity. He has also earned a master of theology and an unaccredited doctor of theology degree from Ruth Rice Seminary in Florida, now located in Lithonia, Virginia, Georgia. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.